we're on our way to Canada. We had to pull off really quick because Eddie was having some serious speed wobble on this thing. It looked there for a second like our boat came in and said psych and then took right back off. <laughs> More that we have in the Pacific. Um, Pick it up. Oh, it's Chris. He can do whatever he wants. It's Thursday morning. All packed up, ready to go to Get Lost, Go Find Yourself. Organized and put together by Critter Moto and several others. Many uh, sponsors donating raffle prizes to this, including myself. Just waiting for the boys to show up. And then we're gonna be on our way to North Vancouver Island, BC. First time I will have crossed the border into Canada on a motorcycle. I'm pretty excited about that. Yes, I remembered my passport. We're already lost. All right, we had to pull off really quick because Eddie was having some serious speed wobble on this thing. Put a little bit more air in his front tire and added three clicks of preload to the rear. But uh, yeah, following him, it was scary looking. So we'll try it out. He's got that brand new super aggressive tire on the front, Dunlop, so that's definitely causing it. But see if we can alleviate that some for him. Keep him in the front, see if it goes away. If he needs to pull over, we will. Keep it right at 70, stay in the middle lane, call it a day. Well, I mean, we're going to get there about the time that we would need to get there early. Okay. Yeah. So, I mean, we are ahead of schedule, but not super. But, I mean, you can't beat the views. We have made it. We're in line in plenty of time. It looked it looked there for a second like our boat came in and said psych and then took right back off. But no, we still got about 25 minutes to wait for our boat. Chris and Nathan are here, Ben's here. We got all kinds of people that we know here already. And we're all gonna be on the same boat, so. Look who we ran into in Port Angeles. We're all sitting here waiting, getting ready to get onto the ferry. Eddie is sitting there playing with his shaft. I'm pretty excited about this. I haven't done a, I've been on in the Washington State Ferry System a bunch. Never on a bike though. This will be fun. If we tie these things down, it's just gonna freaking cause the bikes to go that way. These are for under the skid plate, I'm pretty sure, is what those are for. We just gotta stand here the whole time and hang on to the bikes. Everybody else is doing it, so it seems totally legit.
We have arrived in Victoria, BC. Let's see if I can zoom in on the great looking sailboat. Here's Eddie looking all GQ. What's up, baby girl? What you doing? How you living, huh? Thank you. I hope my microphone picked that up. Ben got us a actually pretty cool little room. It's like a studio. I'm gonna be in the bottom bunk. Ed's the top. Ben is in this spacious, spacious twin. And then all that's on a loft because there's the downstairs. How did they bill it? Like a European, European style? style yeah. European style. So uh, there was a little bit of a concern at first that the bathroom was going to be at the end of the hallway for everybody. But turns out we do have our own bathroom. We are now officially international motorcycle riders. I mean, I have been already. But I was in Canada a week ago. You didn't ride across the border. <laughs> <laughs> Done with our evening in Victoria, time to head up to North Island to a town that sounds like it's a suburb of Hobbiton. Nimkish. Got the bike set over to KPH. I need to get outside so I can acquire satellites. It's not doing it. Whoa, my goodness, it is a bright day. There's the Empress Hotel, right at the waterfront. Beautiful, beautiful morning in Victoria. Getting an early start today compared to our normal. That should put us to camp probably, well, I mean, GPS says just after one o'clock. I, I figure probably more towards two, just because of fuel and rest breaks. I have had a cold for four days as of time of recording this, so you're going to put up with my Optimus Prime voice for this. Um, Vancouver Island, B.C. is deceptively long. It, it took a long time to get from Victoria up to Nimkish. I mentioned it in the video. Nimkish sounds like it's a suburb of Hobbiton, and it really kind of does. Uh, still, we had beautiful weather all the way up there. Um, the the main thing I noticed on the way up there, until you get up towards Nimkish more, up nor more North Island, um, all the roads are very straight and very boring. So we're fast-forwarding through all of that quote-unquote fun, I guess I'll call it. It's the final stop. We just filled up and got some ice in our in our hydration packs. Oh man, I'm ready to be done on this bike today. Six, seven hours yesterday, six, seven hours today. I'm all done. Here we are, we finally made it, thank God. <laughs> you know who we are, do we have to sign in? Did he do did he do the speech already? No. We didn't miss it? Hi, I am Critter Moto. I'd like to welcome you to the very first annual Get Lost and Find Yourself event. Hey, get lost, eh? Huh? Well, nothing. Your support means the world to me. Thank you. As a small token of my appreciation, I have made for you goodie bags. Also included in your goodie bag is a waiver. Please sign the waiver so I don't have to kick you out.
That's All right. It. That, was, that was really good. <laughs> that was amazing. Goodbye. All right, well, we're here. Let's go set up camp chairs and have alcohol and then set up camp. Yay! No way that goes bad. <laughs> All right. Here we are. We made it to camp. Say hi, campers. We're at Windy Waters Campground, Vancouver Island, BC, very North Island, and it's living up to its name. It's windy. We're having to engineer our uh, tent stakes a little bit and for our uh, rain flies, because they keep popping. So, it, see, wind. Somebody lost a pop-up into the uh, woods earlier from the wind. Hopefully this dies down. I was told that yesterday there was barely even the faintest breeze. So tonight might be interesting. We'll see. Again, wind. You probably can even hear it with the dead cat on the camera. And, 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 apparently, according to Sean, they throw gravel. They need to move. Keep moving? Yeah. That, that group's a little close. I think it was. Well, they did, they did just shift I, I back. So, in, uh, I mean, it'll, it'll continue because we have lots of people. I should go get mine. I feel like inappropriate conversations are about to start happening, so it's time to turn off the cameras. Conversations happening. Did you hear that? Yeah, she, truth. She speaks truth. I gotta pick, get a video of the dog. Oh. Oh, this what? is you can't just pick it up. Oh, it's Chris. You can do whatever it wants. I feel like we need to. I'm on fire. Here? Yeah. Oh, what? Well, the two of them are at our uh, and The Oberon? The Oberon class? Well, the, the four that we have in the Pacific. Um, they were built in Britain. That's right. Hey, Eric, is your helmet cold? What's that? Is your helmet cold? A little bit, yeah. Oh, God, it's so wet in here. Why didn't anyone tell me to put it in my tent? Away we go to Telegraph Cove, I think. It is day two, and we were woken up by a very excited Critter Moto this morning. He was... He was darn, there you go. That's Eddie. But yeah, Chris, he was like spastic. What? Eddie's leaving. The blind leaving the blind. I know. I'm not wearing my glasses either, so that's an accurate statement. Where's the closest hospital?
Yeah, that's what I figured. Holy shit. You want a hand? <laughs> Let me give you one. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Okay. So I'm so I'm blowing this pop stand. This uh the nurses up here. Yeah, they, they leave a little bit to be desired. This is the one that I got stuck with to bring me back to uh, Oregon. Yeah, your sponge bath is happening as we get in the car. Yeah, I'm, I'm scared. Like I said in one of my other videos, this has been an Explore Adventure Motor production. Send help. <laughs> All right, I'm going to have a heck of a time piecing this video together because I honestly don't know what type of footage I have before the hospital because a lot of that I don't remember. Um, but anyway, here we are sitting in Ben's car. He was kind enough to be a very good friend and come back up to Victoria, or where, where are we at? Campbell BC, River. Campbell River. On Victoria get me, get me after my surgery for my busted ass leg. There it is, all wrapped up so it doesn't get wet. We're sitting here in a pharmacy parking lot, waiting to get the last of my prescriptions so we can go get the boat get to the mainland and then head towards the border so there's going to be a lot of uh, convalescing videos coming up <laughs> it's a new genre <laughs> yeah yeah Con convalescence camping convalesce so i'll just set up camp gear in the living room something that'll, that'll be good make myself my mountain house meals in front of the couch well through the magic of video and editing and simply just not caring enough to film a lot we have already landed in vancouver and we are in the miserable, not downpour, is that really gross type of a misty rain? The stuff you really don't want to ride in. So all things considered, we're both very thankful that we're in a car. Uh, we also are in a fair amount of traffic. So the saga continues. We're at the border. There, there's like no wait at the border right now. This is outstanding. So, that was the trip. What did you think? Did not turn out the way that I had planned. Didn't turn out the way that any of us had planned. Huge shout out and big gratitude feels towards Dork in the Road. Um, it uh, it kind of glo glossed over a little bit in the video, but uh, that guy's a, a rock star. He saved my bacon. Dork and Eddie after everything was taken care of at the campground and bike and my gear was buttoned up and everything they rode home they they rode uh and stayed i can't remember where he said they stayed that night um rode home and then a couple of days later dork came back all the way back up there in his car to pick me up and bring me home and that was after he had been in Canada the week before, the weekend before for the, uh, I believe it was Grisbait that he attended, that he was at. He has a video on that, so check out his channel. He really came in clutch for me, and I, I mean, that, I mean that's one of the reasons why we're friends, because that guy, he's one of those guys that'll give you the shirt off of his back if, if it's within his power, and I'd do the same for him, so. After the, the accident happened, um, everybody at the uh, Get Lost, Find Yourself camp out, they, they rallied. They, everybody really helped me out. So huge, the, the, the list of names that really helped me out um, that I am eternally grateful for is too long to list here. Uh, it's just really amazing what the, what the moto community came together and did. It's just, I, I am very grateful. Like seriously, heartfelt thanks to every single one of you. I really appreciate you. Um, I can't run and I can't jump yet just because it simply hurts to do that. But I can walk. I've been going to the gym every day since the first of the year. Just because I'm trying to make a, a fitness change, I'm trying to be more fit. I am already right now more fit than I was all last year. And I'm feeling great. I think this incident really changed my perspective on how I was conducting myself last year and my mindset. And I'm done with all that. Um, I will still ride off-road. Absolutely. That's, that's, that's in my blood. It has been since I was probably 11 or 12 years old. 40 years. That's a long time. I've been riding off and on longer than many of you have been alive. I will still ride off-road. Most of my heavy-duty off-road stuff will be on the trail bike. 
The Africa Twin is a fantastic touring bike. It's an outstanding moto camping bike. For me and what I want to do at this point in my life, I'm not going to be doing the hardcore stuff on the on the big bike anymore. It's just it's too much for me to lose, really, I guess is what I'm trying to say. So um, I'll still be doing touring and things like that, but I'm just changing my focus. I will still be doing uh, BDRs. I will not be doing any real off-road to speak of this year, 2024, at all. Just because I want to let my, my leg fully heal and I want to get into a, a better place physically. I'm already making huge gains. I'm feeling fantastic and I'm ready to go, but I don't want to get going off-road too soon and cause more damage, thereby extending my recovery time. That makes no sense. So this this year is going to be a lot of just regular moto camping. I'm not doing all the events this year. Um, I unfortunately will not be attending the Rocky Mountain Roll this year. I'm pretty sad about that and there's a reason for that. Um, because I'm still in recovery and because I, I've been on the bike three times now in the last couple of weeks since September, since this happened. And while it does feel great to be back on the bike, riding around on the street and things like that, I simply don't want to be on a super long distance ride that far away from home while my leg is still recovering. Because I've noticed even just an hour and a half on the bike, the simple vibrations from the bike itself um, cause uh, a little bit of pain to start building up in my ankle. And that's that's not something that I would be able to put up with on seven hour days to and from Montana. So Amanda, I'm really sorry, but I am going to miss Rocky Mountain Roll this year. The only event that I will be attending this year is the um, is Dork in the Roads Camp Out this year. Um, it's down by Sisters. It's a lot closer, it's local, super local. Uh, that's that's gonna be about the extent of the distance that I, my leg will be able to handle this year. And that's okay, um, it's, it's just this year. I'll be back at, I'll be back on my bullshit for next year, right? Not super crazy like, like, I, like I have been and flipping the bike like in Mojave. Uh, the heat stroke down in in southern Oregon or like this up in Canada it was a rough year on the bike for me last year and I, I, I have no intentions to repeat that I'm gonna I'm going at riding with um, a much different mindset as far as gear that I was wearing the boots that I swear by are Alpenstars Tech 7s they are what I was wearing when this happened there are no boots on the market that would have prevented the way that my leg broke. Had I not been wearing my Tech 7s and, I would, and if I was wearing my Forma Adventure boots, the damage would have been far, far worse. I, my leg would have been mangled from the knee down. I do have to replace my boots though. They had to cut my boots off, which was just a heartbreaker. Um, they had to cut my climb pants off too if I already replaced those, but uh. Man, that sucks when that has to happen. But I will be replacing my boots with another pair of Tech 7s. I swear by those things. Because you have almost the same protection as motocross boots, but you can actually walk in them. And they are, you know, if they're not all day comfortable, they're really close. I, I love them. I will stick by them. So the boot question that I've been getting almost every day on Instagram or in messages directly or whatnot, Alpenstar's Tech 7s. No. A different pair of boots would not have prevented that. Where were we riding and what caused that is another uh, question that I've got. On Dork in the Road's video where he's following, it looks like I'm we're riding really slow and I just flop over. What I didn't catch is we were doing about maybe eh, 10, 15 miles an hour. And that was an old railroad grade that they had reclaimed and pulled the rails out. Well, that bridge that we were on still had the rails in it. it. It had concrete sections in between so we could ride through. It had been raining. And all that had happened was I got too close to the rail pocket. And it kind of lips over with some metal. That was wet. And the second that my front tire hit that, went right out from underneath me. I had no time to react. That's actually the last thing that I do fully remember is the handlebars doing this and me going over like that. Then as soon as my head hit the side of the bridge, I was seeing stars and Tweety Birds. 
when I hit, I slid with the bike for a little bit. And if, if you had been there, you could see the scratches in the concrete and everything. And the side of my bike does have some pretty good road rash on the bars and one of the uh, mounts for one of my Denali electronics lights. And in the uh, fairing up top, it also broke my, um, my right side uh, sig uh, signal indicator. So I slid with the bike. Um, that was one of the other things. That was probably the main thing that contributed to my leg breaking because my leg was underneath the bike when that happened, sliding with it and just got caught up. And It's a fall that's happened to all of us hundreds of times with no no real consequences to speak of. It's just this time, it was just my time to get hurt. Those are the first broken bones I've ever had in my life. There, there isn't, it, it happens so quickly, I had no time to react and jump out of the way or anything. Sometimes shit just happens and shit happened. That was, it was just simply my time. That was the video of the Get Lost, Find Yourself in Vancouver, my last trip of that ended my 2023 year and screwed up my 2024 year. But it's it in a way, it screwed it up in a really good way because it refocused me. It recentered me. I thank you all very much for being uh, supporters of mine, whether you've been here for one day or three years, four years since the beginning of my first channel. But you haven't seen the end of me yet. I'm Travis, and this has been an Explore Adventure Moto production. Stay hairy.